So Pew Research released a new poll. Um, some of the information is very useful, and some of it is utterly useless. Now, we spoke about this a little bit before, but we're going to touch on it again here because I think it's an important conversation. So first, let's go to the general issues and what the American people think are the most important ones. So the chart here shows um, economy, healthcare, and terrorism among top public priorities as concerns over jobs and deficit fade. So economy, 70% say that's the most important issue. Then you have healthcare at 69%. By the way, healthcare routinely ranked as the number one issue in the past. So it's always up there by the top because our healthcare system is an abysmal disaster. Then you have terrorism at 67%, jobs down at 50%, and budget deficit at 48%. The deficit one is fascinating to me because um, the deficit's actually massively increasing, but Americans don't care about it. Which is weird, because whenever a Democratic president's in charge, what happens is the Republicans fearmonger over the deficit, and then the concern about deficit takes up a little bit. So it's really weird how that works. It's, you know, the, it's the oldest trick in the book that the Republicans do. They massively grow the deficit by giving tax cuts to the rich when they're in office, and then when they're out of office, they turn around and blame the Democrats and go, oh, who created this deficit? You guys should really fix it. And then obviously when you try to fix it, when you try to reduce the deficit, that actually hurts private sector growth. So it's a way that they, it's a double whammy because they chastise the Dems to reduce the deficit, even though they didn't cause it. And then at the same time, that could lead to the economy contracting because as a general rule, public deficits lead to, leads to private expansion. That, you know, this is like MMT 101. Um, so it, it's a little bit of, it's a double-edged sword. They, they find a way to get you. No matter what, they find a way to get you. Ah, deficit's so high. Why is deficit so high? Well... The private sector's growing, so I thought you cared about that, too. Yeah, but now I care about deficit, because you're in charge. Reduce the deficit. Then the Democrats go to reduce deficit. Um, the private sector contracts a little bit. Ah, we need jobs. Why aren't you giving us more jobs? So it's, it's, a, it's a little a clever little trick they play, and the Democrats always walk into the trap because they're Democrats. Um, <clears throat> now, the next charts I'm about to show you here are more interesting to me. So for the Republicans... 58% say they want more conservative politicians. 38% say more moderate. Now that's something, isn't it? In the era of Trump, the Republican's Republican. You know, a guy who throws red meat at his base all day long. They go, yeah, more conservative, more conservative, more conservative. So the, the, the base is... They run the show on the right, the far right base. And a lot of the right-wing politicians super serve their base. And these numbers kind of reflect that. 58% more conservative, 38% uh, more moderate. Now, anybody paying attention is going to go, God damn, the Republican Party really should become more sane because they're insane right now. Well, look at the Democratic results, and then this begins to paint the picture of why this is really useless, these numbers that they gave us and this question that they asked. 53% of Democrats say they want more moderate politicians. 40% say more liberal. Now, put aside the distinction for extremely online people like us, the distinction between liberal and leftist, just put that aside for a second. Um, because when they say more liberal, they mean further left, okay? But this, is, this poll number has been trotted out and abused and misused, and I've seen it... Uh, Endlessly since this uh, poll was released, which was a little while ago, not too long ago, but a little while ago. And so now you have people going around saying, oh, the Democrats, the problem is Democrats have gone too far left and they need to be more moderate to be in line with the American people. Now, you guys already know the answer to this and we spoke about it recently, but um, that is incredibly misleading. And here's why. People do not know labels at all. So when... Democrats say, oh, yeah, we want more moderate um, politicians and not more liberal politicians. Well, what does it mean to be more moderate? Have they defined their terms? No, they haven't defined their terms. So they just say it, and people interpret it differently. So we've talked about it before on the show, man, but the most recent polls, 70% of the American people want Medicare for all. 58% of the American people want free college. Only 17% still want to be in Afghanistan. 62% want to legalize marijuana. 70% want to raise taxes on people making over $10 million a year, top marginal rate to become 70%. 
59% just want to broadly raise taxes on the rich. When we go issue for issue, gun violence is another one. 90% want universal background checks. The position that is objectively further left is more popular. So I have zero use for polls that just talk about labels without defining the labels. Because, and the best example of this is Bernie Sanders in the 2016 election. He won the Midwest, and he won among Democrats who self-described as more conservative. If you know politics, you're going to say, hold on now, that's a contradiction. Bernie is literally further left than Hillary was, and than any other candidate was in the Democratic primary. So how could the guy who's furthest left win people who self-describe as more conservative? The answer is, again, people don't know labels. So they think, that oh, yeah, I'm conservative. Do you agree with Medicare for All? Yeah. Do you agree with free college? Yeah. Do you agree with the living wage? Yeah. Do you agree with card check for unions? Yeah. Do you agree with ending the wars? Yeah. Um, and the list goes on and on. Raising tax on the rich? Yeah. So people could call themselves whatever they want to call themselves. But in terms of when you walk them through it, hey, here's a political test. Who do you agree with more? People who self-describe as more conservative often come out libertarian left. So just know that. So this poll is useless and it's being misused by many voices to try to push this narrative that, oh my God, the far left is crazy and the lunatics run the asylum. And that's nonsense. And also there's this conflation in today's day and age that annoys the shit out of me because it's not true. Where people conflate further left with more social justice warrior. Okay? Here's the reality about that. Social justice warrior, which is, you know, the people who are typically saying, oh, I don't want to allow these conservative speakers on my campus because I don't agree with what they say, so we're going to try to protest them to make sure they can't speak, okay? That's the crowd that's generally understood as and described as social justice warrior. It has a pejorative connotation. They don't mean, like, Martin Luther King-style, so, uh, you know, social justice warrior, somebody who's actually fighting for necessary change. They mean, like, oversensitive college kids who are censorious and authoritarian. So, but that's the point, is when somebody is a, a, an SJW... That means that they're more authoritarian, not further left-wing. There's a giant difference there, which is why that quadrant political spectrum is so important, because it, it more accurately reflects reality. So when somebody is social justice warrior -y, they are more authoritarian. But people are now conflating that with, oh, further left means more social justice warrior -y. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't at all. <laughs> further left, I mean, we're talking about economics. That means they make sense. Like they want Medicare for all and free college and a living wage. That's what that means. So we need to stop conflating further left with more social justice warrior-ish. Because that's not accurate. If you want to go after social justice warriors, and I actually do on this show because I don't agree with authoritarianism, you have to go after the authoritarians. You don't go after the libertarian left. You don't go after the populist left. You don't go after social democrats. So there's a lot of uh, confusion in terms, and it's misleading, and it gives people a fundamentally incorrect understanding of politics, and it needs to be corrected.